the question that needs to be addressed first is, why bother with journals? Aren't textbooks enough of a source? The practice of medicine rests on a foundation of well-known textbooks, many of which have lasted almost a century based on the sterling nature of the evidence on which they rest. This might well have been an irrefutable question in the early decades of the last century when new information accumulated at a leisurely pace. The process of writing a textbook commonly takes three years or more from the time the idea for the book or a need for a revised edition arises to the day when the printed book is available for widespread purchase and use. In today's fast-paced world of information, new knowledge is added with such great volume and velocity that any textbook is outdated from the moment of its publication, certainly within a year or two at most. We live in a time of history when information and knowledge has accumulated at a pace that is overwhelming. We just cannot keep up. The information deluge shows no signs of abating. It is easy and tempting to just give up. The volume of publishing has long since surpassed all reasonable attempts at keeping abreast, even in the narrowest of disciplines. One solution to this problem, and a good one at that, is sources that accumulate and summarize what is current and choice. Up to date, the Cochrane Library and others of a similar nature provide us options to solve this problem. And, you could argue, that a busy doctor needs little else. But, there are situations when textbooks and reviews are not enough. We encounter problems in day-to-day -day practice, which may lie outside the breadth of textbooks. We need to look at journals that pursue such items in depth academic practice, not just for those in the ivory towers, involves following a trail of journal articles that we need to get on top of. And, not to forget, the hallowed entity known as the Journal Club, boring events where a few show-offs dominate the event, intimidating the rest of us into silence. The air is full of chanting about the indisputable superiority of evidence-based medicine. We are told that articles can be arranged in a hierarchy of merit, a pyramid of inductive reasoning, based on the ability to control bias and demonstrate cause and effect. We nod our heads in agreement but remain unclear about the rules governing this process. When attempting to read articles in depth, we have to deal with arcane definitions, complex tables, and data representations. How can we make sense of this? Journal articles present evidence in support of an argument. Like the judicial process, there are rules of evidence that have to be followed before judgment can be made on the validity. These rules are not hard to understand or interpret. There is the commonly held belief and fear that it is necessary to have a working knowledge of statistics and epidemiology. This is not true. The purpose of this course is to arm you with the necessary tools to read journal articles critically. The course is organized as 10 modules, each of which explores a specific concept. Examples and illustrations are liberally used. It is our firm belief that this toolbox will give you a set of powerful implements to guide you in your exploration of current medical literature.